In today's video, I'm gonna teach you 10 ACT math topics that you need to know because they appear regularly in the ACT, but all 10 of these are topics that are ones that I see a lot of students struggle with because you've never learned them in school or you've entirely forgot how to solve. Now, to teach you guys these topics, I'm gonna to take you inside my new Prep Pro's Complete Guide to ACT Math book, and we're gonna use this book as a way to go through and learn some of those basic lessons that are in the book that are gonna help you guys improve your math scores right away. The first topic we're gonna learn is matrix addition and subtraction. Even if you've never learned matrices before, this is actually a super easy topic. If you do wanna learn matrices thoroughly, you can sign up for the free trial of my ultimate ACT course. There's a link in the comments below. But for the video here, we're just gonna cover the super easy one, which is addition and subtraction. Now, all we need to do is basic arithmetic, just stay in the same place. So if I'm doing negative five plus 10, top left, stay top left, negative five plus 10 is five. Top right, stay top right. Four plus seven is 11. You probably get it at this point. So a question like this could be in the ACT. Might have looked hard a second ago. Now it's super easy. If we're solving for A plus B, let's first solve for A. A is top right, so we're going to stay top right. We see 14 plus A equals 9. We subtract 14 from both sides. We get A equals negative 5. Now we see B is bottom left, so we can look at the bottom left numbers. Just do the math. Negative 9 plus 6 equals B which means b is equal to negative 3. So if I add those together, a plus b, negative 5 plus negative 3 is going to be a value of negative 8. Super easy. Now, if you're wondering what the heck do these numbers on the side mean, you'll see on the screen popping up now, I have a four-level system throughout this entire book. So it makes it super, super easy for students to use because you know exactly which lessons and concepts and practice questions to do based on your level. So throughout the rest of this video, the numbers on the side will tell you how easy or hard the topics we're learning are. Next, we're going to learn about repeating decimals. Now, if you see a question like number one down here, what is the 307th place after the decimal point? The repeating decimal 0.34562. This might seem really confusing or intimidating. Many of you have never learned how to do these, but they're actually easy once we know the trick. And the trick is we always want to go to the back of the pattern and use the repeating pattern to our advantage. If I write this pattern out and look at the twos, the twos appear every fifth digit. So every time it's a multiple, of five, since we have a, a five uh, a pattern that's five long here, it's going to be a two. So all we need to do is find a multiple of five near 307. Well, I know that 305 is a multiple of seven, or sorry, a multiple of five. So the 305th one after the decimal point is going to be a two, which means I can now just count forward in the sequence. The sequence goes two, then it goes three, then it goes four. So my 307th term is going to be a four. So the answer here is C. Again, once we know to solve this, even though it seems really confusing, it's actually super easy to set up and solve once you know this trick. My next trick here is all about logs and how to cheat these questions by using your calculator. I want you guys to make sure you memorize your change of base rule, which is if I have log base B of A, we can just log, do log of A over log of B. So if we see a question like number two, which if you don't love logs, a lot of students find these confusing or forgot how they work. If I have five times log base three of nine plus log base two of eight, what is it equal to? Well, all we need to do here is type this in your calculator. I can do log base three of nine. I can just type log nine over log three, which is two. So I can replace that with a two. And then for log base two of eight, I can just type it in as log eight over log two equals three. So five times two plus three turns into five times five, which of course is 25 and the answer is E. Of course, for my more advanced math students, make sure you go back and review how logs work. If you recognize you don't know how these work, but even if you're not great at logs, make sure again, memorize this equation. You can solve questions like this with just your calculator. My next tip has to do with averages. And a lot of times ACT likes to make hard average questions towards the back of the test that are just a weighted average. So an example would be something like here we see with number four for our mean, median, and mode chapter. So during the first 30 minutes of work at Berkey's Bakery, Vibe on Each Rack uh, decorated, 23 cookies per minute for the first 10 minutes, and then 14 cookies per minute for the next 20 minutes, which the following gives the average number of cookies Vivani decorated per minute for her first 30 minutes at work. So again, if that seems at all confusing to you, if you know our weighted average equation, we can actually solve this in one super quick step. And of course, speed is really important on the ACT math test if you're shooting for high scores. So all we need to do with a weighted average, if we're given two averages, we're going to take the average and then multiply it by the weight. The weight could be the number of minutes or the number of, you know, maybe students who got a certain score. There's different things we can have, but here it's going to be our averages, of course, the average and the weight is going to be the minutes. So our averages are 23 cookies per minute and 14 and our weights are 20 and 10. 
So we can just set up our equation once we have this memorized down here. So it's going to be 23 times 10. Our average times the weight is 10 minutes plus 14 times 20, the average of 14 times 20 minutes divided by the total weight, which is here the total minutes. And we can get an answer of 17 and solve this question super quickly. So again, if we ever see two averages that are different, like maybe it's, uh, you know, I ran for five miles an hour uh, for two minutes and then 10 miles an hour for eight minutes. What was my average speed? Any questions like that, we can use this weighted average equation and solve them in one quick step. Next, let's talk prime factorization. This is a topic that just appeared in the April 2023 AC, so we need to make sure we know this. Now, in case you forgot, prime factorization is when we express a number as all of its prime factors. So all you do is basically, like we see here, do a factor tree. So 20 is the same as two times 10, and then two times five. The prime factorization is when we write all of those factors out. So if question like seven says, what's the, which of the following is the correct prime factorization of 6,006, all we need to do as we can see here, set up the factor tree. So grab your calculator, divide it by two. We get two times 3,003. See what's divisible by 3,003. It's three and 1,001. Keep on going. We can get a seven. We get seven times 143. 143 is 11 times 13. All we do is write those out. So the prime factorization is two times three times seven times 11 times 13. The dots and the answer choices are just a different way to say multiplication. And that's all we need to know if we ever see a prime factorization question on the test. Next, let's talk area, volume, and units. Another topic you might have never really seen at school that much. So here they love to do is really mess with the units with you. So here it says a professional soccer field is 136 yards long and 93 yards by wide. What is the area of the professional soccer field in square feet? Now the mistake everyone does is they go, okay, well I remember like one yard equals three feet. So they find the area 136 times 93 and divide by three. If you go, that sounds good, you would be wrong. What we need to do here is we need to convert the units before we find any area or volume in these questions. So we first need to convert the length to feet by multiplying by three, we got 408 feet, and then the width by multiplying by three. Now we can find the area is just our good old length times width, which is 113,832 square feet. The reason we have to do this is one square yard is the same as nine square feet. Because remember, one yard is the same as three feet by three feet. So that's why I have to do our conversion first. Otherwise, we get messed up and we get the wrong answers. Next, let's talk factorial. Factorial is actually super easy, but a lot of students I've worked with have never seen this exclamation point before. So if you don't know what this is, all you need to know is factorial like this. Five factorial is just five times four times three times two times one. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. All you do is multiply by the number and all the integers blow it all the way to 1. So if you see a question like this, 2 factorial plus 4 factorial, 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, 4 factorial is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, punch it in your calculator, we get 2 for 2 factorial, 24, of course 2 plus 24 is 26, and the answer is C. As we can see, of course, super simple question once you know what factorial is. Now let's talk area and volume. All the equations on the screen here you see are important ones to memorize. I know most of this looks familiar to you. The reason we're here is there are two equations, trapezoids and kites, that most students do not have memorized or may have never learned in school. So make sure that you have these memorized because if you see them on test day, they're actually really easy to solve if you have these equations memorized. If you don't, they become really, really difficult and time consuming. Next, let's learn how to compare across ratios. Now, the ACT actually thinks these are hard when these questions appear. They're almost always towards the back of the test, but they're super easy once we know the trick. So here in example three, the ratio of x to y is three to four. The ratio of y to z is two to 10. What's the ratio of x to z? Well, the trick to solving these questions is we need to make whatever variable appears in both ratios, which here we have y in both ratios have the same value. So I currently have x to y, three to four, y to z, two to 10. All we need to do is multiply this one by two so the y's match. It becomes three to four and four to 20. Now, once the values are the same in the middle, we can compare across ratios and we can find that our value of x to z is three to 20 and the answer is b. Like we see here again, even though it might seem tricky at first, super easy once we know how to set it up and solve. Finally, let's talk vector addition and subtraction. Now, many of you may have never seen or learned vectors before, but they are fair game on the ACT. And the simple questions are just gonna be addition and subtraction. Now, the first two vectors gonna appear are like these weird bracket ones. All we need to know is just add the numbers in the same spots. So if we're trying to find the sum of these vectors, we're just gonna add the two and the negative six, which is gonna give us a negative four. We can already tell that it has to be 
B or D, and then we can add the five and the eight, which gives us a value of 13. The answer is B, super simple. That can also be an example two here with this little uh, I, J notation. So vectors A and B can be written as five I minus J and 12 I minus four J. If vector C is equal to two A minus B, which one equals C? Again, if this seems confusing, we're just adding the things in the same places and we're gonna follow the coefficients. So two times vector A is going to be 10 I minus vector B is minus 12 I, which means it has to be negative two I. I can already tell the correct answer here is C. I hope you guys learned a lot during that video and those 10 quick tips are gonna help you get a better score on your upcoming ACT. Now, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed with regards to ACT math, the challenge of course is there is so much stuff. Some of those topics that we just learned might've been ones that you feel like you've never learned in school or you've completely forgotten. And of course, we're just scratching the surface. There are many, many more topics on the ACT. So if you're asking yourself, how am I supposed to prepare for this? Well, good news, I mentioned it earlier. You can order a copy of my ACT math book on Amazon. It is by far the best ACT math book out there. I just published it in 2023, so it is super, super current. One of the problems with a lot of the other ACT math books, like the best books out there, they're actually old. They were written five or six or seven years ago, and a lot of the topics we saw in this video, like vectors, repeating patterns, and other ones we talked about are not even in those books, but they are regularly on the ACT. So that's one thing that makes this book great is it up to date. The second thing that makes this book great is there's actually a video course of me teaching you everything in the book. It has the same lessons that I teach in private tutoring sessions at $200 an hour. And it also has videos of me explaining all 1,000, basically over 1,250 practice questions that are in the book. So if you wanna sign up for a free trial, you can actually learn two chapters in this for free, download them for free and watch videos of me teaching you the whole thing. You can learn everything you need to know about matrices and mean, median and mode. There's a ton of practice questions in there as well. So it's totally free to sign up. There is a link down below. If you guys do wanna sign up for the full course, which has over 30 hours of videos of me teaching you everything in the book, if you do buy the book, there's a discount code inside the cover to make it just $29.99 per month for your lifetime membership. And an even cheaper option at just $12.99 a month, there's an answer explanation course, which has videos of me explaining how to do every single question. So it is by far the best way to get prepared for ACT math at a pretty reasonable or low price point. Uh, other than that, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So please like and subscribe for more ACT content. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, this is Matt at Prep Pro signing off. I will see you guys next time.